Hi, Paula. Hi, Thank Paul. you very much for inviting us to Trowbridge. Ah, it's a delight. It's, well, it's lovely. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not many people make it this far down the M4. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, recently, you were recognised by a great place to work. Yeah. Um, congratulations. Thank you. What do you think, in your opinion, really separates you, though, and, and justifies that recognition? Mm. It's, it, I, I just tell you a little before um, before we, we sort of look at what it was. The the top ten was really significant for us because when we when we started our, our journey, if you like, in terms of thinking about the culture we wanted to create for the business about five years ago, it was an absolute dream to be top one hundred. I can mm. remember being in a room and I was going, "Oh, if we were top one hundred, great place to work," we'd feel that we'd done something. So we'd had a couple of previous placings in top twenty, yeah. but actually getting top ten was was it's, yeah, it's made amazing. the difference. And I think one to get from top twenty to top ten, some of it was consistency in application. Some of it was about learning, you know, thinking, okay, what are we really good at now? What have what's been recognised? But actually, where are the, the small areas? To, that can make a big difference mm. to improve. So stepping up into top 10, I think it was that. Specifically in, in what was recognised that sets us apart, um, I think there is, there is something around the responsibility that we give people. Um, it's, it's more than delegation. It's absolutely much more than delegation mm. because it's about helping people to contribute in the best way they can and trusting people when they want to get involved in something that they can do a great job um, and then giving them the, the tools and the support to be able to do that. Um, and that came through strongly in, in some of the responses. Um, the other thing that came through really strongly was actually our, our core purpose. So um, the, the purpose around the early life nutrition business in terms of you know, nourishing early life today because tomorrow matters and what you do here every day really counts for the, the health of the nation in the future and the health of, of children in the future. I mean, it's a massive message now, far more than it was when we kind of started yeah. on our journey in early life nutrition. Um, but translating that into what everybody does day to day to, to make their own difference. And I think that, that really true engagement in the purpose, that's one of the other things. Um, and then I think the third thing that's called out is actually that sense of, um, valuing people actually valuing people in lots of different ways so it's not about the money you throw at it it's about how you how you recognize and, and yeah. you know it, less about how much we spend more about how we do it um, and uh, the way in which we we celebrate you know what people have done and, and how they make a difference um, you've got a really strong emphasis on development mm. I mean not just you personally in terms of your role but in the organisation, you, you yeah. briefly touched on that sort of responsibility and giving people responsibility. Yeah. I mean, why is it important for businesses to to really invest in their development? You know, I think every company, every HR department understands L and D, but yeah. you know, why is it particularly important here, and why other companies should have maybe a, a more emphasised focus on it? Mm. I think there's a there's often, a, a, particularly from an HR team's point of view, and often a, a keenness to sort of say, well, it's about developing our talent and it's about, you know, the, the, the and that is one factor, mm. of course. You know, you, you need to want to develop the people who are working with you for themselves and so that, that each person grows as they're with you. For us, it's a, it's a little bit more than that. I think we found um, probably more in the past three or four years, more than any other time, the, the pace of change in our environment and context, be it in the retail environment, be it in the regulatory environment, um, be it in the consumer environment, everything is shifting so rapidly. It's such a cliche, but you know. No, but it's true. But, yeah. <laughs> that's what makes it a cliche. Um, and it's, it's more about how do you help people learn to learn and unlearn? So it's not learning for learning's sake, it's how do you kind of develop that learning muscle, yeah. that agility, that, that sense of curiosity, so that actually you're recognising what's changing or that things are about to change before they happen and therefore readying yourself for them. So if I, you know, if you, if, if I sort of sat down and listed the number of things that have changed even in the past 12 months for us, mm. um, Without the ability in everybody here to learn better, mm. we would not be where we are now and we wouldn't have sustained the commercial success we have. Um, so for me, there's a really good, strong commercial argument about why you need to invest in learning. Yeah. Um, you've got, you know, well, we've got sort of 200 eyes and ears out there 
who all need to be tuned in to what's what's around on the horizon and, yeah. and what do we need to do about it and how can they play a part in it um, and if we can make the most of that and, and help people bring that into what they do every day then that's going to put us ahead and keep us ahead yeah no I really like the idea of of it not just being for learning sake but sort of strengthening a learning muscle so it's, yeah. it, it makes a lot of sense as you say in the business case as well yeah um, you've also talked in the past about how it can help build trust among yes. employees yes tell us a little bit more about that it, it, trust underpins so much I think it's, it's sometimes the benefit of hindsight um, you know you stop and reflect on your journey and where you've come and actually that's when you start to notice the things that have really made the difference mm. trust underpins so much of what we've made happen in, in our journey over the last few years um, and actually what sustained the success um, so it, I think in terms of learning you have got to have it if you're going to have people genuinely learn you have to have a trusting environment because at some point you've got to put into practice what you've learned intellectually yeah and that's really hard if you're doing it somewhere where you feel vulnerable mm. threatened judged whatever you want to say so if you can if you can give people some tools and then create an environment where they actually feel do you know what I can go and put this into practice then that works so something like coaching which we've invested heavily in um, yes giving people some great tools and skills but actually the the uh, profusion of coaching across the business has meant that it's not unusual for somebody to talk about, oh, I had a coaching session yesterday and this is what I learned. And can you give me some feedback? Because I've been thinking about, I don't know how I present or mm. um, I need to influence differently or something like that. So actually it creates trust because it becomes okay. It becomes the, the, the sort norm, of right thing, sort of, the right yeah. thing to do, the norm, exactly. Um, so that actually has really helped. So the two have really worked together. Um, and trust in if I think about how uh, we've taken more risks on people in their careers and, and helped progress careers differently different functional moves um, faster career progression that's been about having trust at the heart of it so if you want to go back to learning to develop talent mm. um, then absolutely you know you need you need the people who are recruiting the talent to see potential differently and trust potential differently and if you're coaching somebody from a different function um, and you, you have no idea what life is like in, I don't know, a healthcare nutrition solutions team or wherever. Yeah. Actually, if you can see through coaching, actually, there is some potential here in a way that I wouldn't normally recognize in my finance role or whatever, then actually you, you trust the potential of people. And that's meant that uh, our internal recruitment rate's gone from something like 43% to 70 plus percent in the last four years. Wow. So it's made a mass, just the number of internal moves yeah. Um, and taking graduates into more roles. It's not just you know, who, it's not just sort of who do we bring in, who progresses through. It's actually, okay, thinking, where could we start earlier? Um, the, the, the nature of what we do is heavily science based, so heavily expertise based. And this is not to, you know, this is not to undermine the importance of that expertise, but it's really just challenging ourselves to say, when is it really core expect expertise we need and when is it something where there's a balance that we need some people with great expertise but we need some yeah. other capabilities too which we could find in different places the cross-function piece i think yeah. is particularly interesting um a lot of people talk about it and it's it's nice for the individual because yeah. they get a bit of variety in their role but for the business itself what are the benefits of allowing people to move around the organization I think I think for us, where we're, we're moving into um, a, a multi-category business, um, previously infant formula milk was was where our strength lay, and arguably it still is. But actually, when you're exploring different categories across the first 1,000 days, which is it's an area lots of people exploring, it's it's, it's new mm. um, and it's different. It's really important you see things from different perspectives. It's like a de-risking strategy almost that you say, okay, there's there's not one person's view of this that's the right view. Actually, what we need is the views from lots of different people and different stakeholders, different different ways of seeing the same situation and you get that from from people working in different functions mm. um, so it's been that it's been so therefore a way of generating insights um, uh, therefore a way of tackling problems differently um, we have a, an annual I'll call it a conference for want of a better word but it's 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 way removed from what a conference <laughs> is the office that you're in today is actually where we hold it 
um, and we have teams working across the, the whole of the business and we just sort of gather them together in groups around key business challenges. And we worked out that actually in the two days that, uh, that we work here, we get the equivalent in, in hours of a six-man project team working full-time for five weeks. Oh, wow. Now, it, you get to that, but a six-man project team is only six mines. We mm. get 200 mines. Um, and actually what we found is the, the breadth of thinking in terms of the key challenges we're addressing is far greater the, and, and it comes much faster pace. So actually what we're looking to do now is to take that and say, okay, we've, we can do that one. We've done that on a big scale once, twice a year. What would that look like if we did it every month with a smaller group of people. Yeah. Again, drawn cross-functionally because people, people sign up to whichever challenges they want to work on regardless of where they work in the business. So what would happen if we did that more often on, on smaller things? So that's where we're moving to because we see such value in doing it. We want to replicate it yeah. uh, in different ways. And it's just the, it's the quality of the thinking you get is tremendous and what you take back in. So it's not just what you contribute to on the day, actually what you're then doing is, do you know what, I hadn't thought about how, um, I don't know, somebody in, our, somebody in our supply chain team and the contacts they have with some of the, the people in logistics and in the warehouse, and what does that mean in terms of, you know, maybe some of my retailers and some of the other people that they might know and the connections I can make, because you sat alongside somebody you wouldn't normally work with, yeah. and so you're taking back in different perspectives as well as on the day. No, that's, yeah, um, that's, and I think, you know, I talked about internal recruitment and the number of cross-functional moves and internal moves. It goes through that as well. So uh, if you do a secondment uh, into a role for two, three months, you know, you might get some great project experience. But that then, even if you want to go back into your own function and do the same thing again, it may not be as a stepping stone into that new function. Take it back in and you see your world very differently. Um, but in a positive way too. Are there a lot of individuals that are sort of putting themselves forward then for sort of secondments and things like that? Yeah, we have, we have increasingly because it becomes more normal, accessible. They sort of notice it and think, yeah. oh, well, someone else did that. I'd yeah, like yeah. to do that as well. Yeah, yeah. We have, um, we've got a great example, actually, one of our, our HR managers um, who joined in, who was in HR, I wanted to see the world outside HR, so joined us in supply chain um, as part of our purchasing function okay. um, and worked in there for, for six months. And then that was going to be a case of, okay, and then I'll see where I want to do, I want to do supply chain or, and she actually, from that, she said, no, as much as I've really found being on the operational side of the business has given me an insight I never previously had in HR. I now know I want to be in HR, but I'm going to do it in a very different way yeah. because actually I see my role in the business quite differently to how I saw it before. Mm. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for, for speaking with us today. Delighted, and uh, it sounds really, really exciting what you're doing. And I think there's a lot of other business because businesses can learn from that when it comes to learning. So thank you. Thank you.